Today we are in Tarragona, Spain, in southern Catalonia. Tarragona is a famous uh, old Roman settlement. Well, Tanya and I want to just tell you a little bit about an attempted scam that just uh, happened to us. Um, Tanya, do you want to start telling what happened? Well, there was a guy, uh, Jay was ahead of me, and he was running to Jay, saying something in Spanish, and I noticed he touched his hand to Jay's shirt and left a handprint. And then I looked, the back of his shirt was all full of what looked like bird poo. poo. It looked like bird dew, but it smelled like cookies. And so the guy told motion to Jay, come, come, we've got crap all over your shirt. Take your shirt off, here is a fountain. Well, of course, I realized that I had crap all over the back of my shirt. And this has happened to me before in Santiago, not... Real bird. Real bird, dude. <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot of it, and it even got onto my pants, and it, it happened, like, right under a tree. So, you know, it sort of made sense, but Tanya was pretty sharp and, and noticed this that, that he had a lot of this stuff in his hand. On, on his hand. On his hand. And he touched Jay on he, the back yeah. and there was like cookie stuff. Yeah. I thought, uh-oh, uh scam. Yeah, and I, I felt uh, I felt the touch, but I thought it was, oh, he was just telling me, uh, or that, that was just the, the bird poo that was coming down. And I went, oh, man, you know, and then he must have thought we were Germans because he, uh, he used the German word for uh, bird poo. That, uh, and then I noticed it was on my pants, and then he says, he says, oh, come take your shirt off. Well, I know that, and he, and, uh, he, he it, knew it, exactly where uh, well, it fountain just, was. Well, it just so happened that there was a fountain not long, far away, which I had noticed before, and I would have gone there anyway, but he just happened real close there, so he, he, he insists on going with us. I said, no, 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 it's okay, I got it here, you know, and then, you know, I take my shirt off, but then, of course, he, I, I re I'm really, wait, this guy is being way too attentive. You know, he's beyond being just a nice guy. Right, Tanya? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's starting to really creep me out. Yeah, so I took my man purse off. I handed it to Tanya, handed her my hat. I'm watching for everything, make sure he isn't going for my pockets. And he takes out immediately some... Uh, a brand new package of Of tissue. Kleenex, of tissues. <laughs> and there he's helping helping me, uh, quote, helping me wipe this crap off my uh, my pants. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. Hey, man, go away. This is a little too much. Went on and on and on. And then, well, I took my shirt off and I'm washing it in that in that uh, spigot. And, he, and, you know, it's like, I said, okay, fine. We got this. And, uh, and then eventually then he went away. But, but he got me too. Oh, yeah, and then, oh, you noticed, yeah, then Tanya had it all over the back of her shirt, too. So, uh, Tanya then, uh, well, you see there, all this, all this crap. So and it's it too, smells like cookies. And it smells like cookies, and no, no bird, unless it's a very large bird, is going <laughs> to let go of that amount of stuff. Now, so this is for uh, our viewers. Be aware of this kind of thing. I've read about this scam before, but it's never really happened to me. But, you know, it just so happens that there were two of us instead of one. I think this scam would be a little bit more effective uh, if it was one tourist and while you're, you know, getting your stuff out and taking your shirt off, whatever, then he's grabbing for whatever. But we quickly checked. And then, of course, he was gone after we told him, no, oh, no, we don't need you anymore. And uh, we checked. Uh, wallet's still there. Camera's still there. Phone's, uh, still, phone's there. still there. Everything was still intact. But so uh, he didn't get away with it. But this is a, a good thing for our viewers to be aware of. It's the old bird poop on your shirt and I will help you out scam. They're not here to help you out. Foiled. They're here to help themselves out. Okay. We are now uh, above what's known as the Roman Circus. And uh, this is a part of what remains of it. Uh, it was where the Romans had their chariot races. And uh, this was where uh, the corner, where they turned the corner. So, uh, uh, of course, part of the, uh, the racetrack is, uh, is gone, but here you can see uh, what remains of the uh, seating area where uh, excited Romans and Tarragonians would watch uh, as these guys went tearing a, around the, the circus. And if you keep, or circuit, but they call it a circus, so as you go over here, you can see some more of what what remains of that. 
One interesting thing about uh, Tarragona is that it had a kind of a special place in the heart of Romans because when they got here, they found that uh, the people here were already wearing Roman style togas. They thought, well, wow, these people are really uh, simpatico with us. And uh, they, so they held a special place in the heart of Romans because these guys were already toga wearers. The, the Romans loved this place because uh, primarily it had this access to this huge bay out here. And uh, they had, th throughout the time the Romans were here, they had gladiator contests and all the other things that you associate with the Roman Empire. So the circus here was built at the end of the first century and most likely was used until the end of the uh, fourth century AD. And sometime after that, the French occupied this part of Spain. In 1813, as the French were leaving, they uh, set off a number of explosives to blow up part of the place. Well, isn't that nice? See you later. from the circus and of course the city built up around it as things always do and using foundations and remains of the past to build on the present. What's always amazing to me when I see ruins like this is that these are you know they're about 1900 years old or so and which in the overall scope of human history is just a speck of time but uh, it, it always is still incredible that uh, the way they, the Romans made these arches, uh, you know, they still stand uh, even through all of the trials and tribulations of history. Uh, they're still here. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Before we leave the Roman circus here, I wanted to just mention that uh, this uh, stadium or the circus where the chariot races took place held about 25,000 people which is, you know, moderate size for, for Roman times. The chariots themselves were driven by slaves, uh, for the most part, of uh, rich people that owned the teams uh, of either two or four horses. And some of these slaves would become very famous. Uh, they were the jockeys, the, the Willie Shoemakers of, of the day. On the sides of one of the buildings here in Tarragona are photos of one of their festivals where they build these human towers. And you may have seen this sort of thing before, but this is uh, a lot of this has taken place uh, in the main square and part of the square that is in front of the, the church where we had dinner the other night. And just, I mean, it is, uh, I think it's kind of uh, madness, but uh, you can see what they do. They, they build this human tower. I don't know how they get down, but it's just, it's just amazing. I guess I would advise our viewers who are older travelers, uh, despite your enthusiasm and opinion of your physical fitness and prowess, I guess I would advise you not to do this if you're ever here in Tarragona at the time of the year when they're having this kind of festival. Just watch it and from a safe distance. When Tanya and I first got here a couple of days ago, of course we were a little bit tired from traveling, but we went to a little beachside restaurant and I don't think either of us were terribly impressed with the place. But since then, Tanya has really... I love Tarragona. Tanya loves Tarragona. I love Tarragona. And so Tanya's thinking about coming back here for an extended stay at some point. I think one of the things that kind of maybe turned us off a little, it kind of depends on your own preference, was that this, this uh, beach that our little restaurant overlooked was 
uh, obviously clothing optional and uh, I don't know just the nobody was in terrible shape but you know to see guys walking around with their dongs hanging out and just it, it just it was just not appetizing it just wasn't appetizing <laughs> these guys are very proud of themselves you know and just go swim I thought, where the heck have you just, taken me just Jay? go swimming in the sea but you know not not that there's anything wrong with that don't get me wrong you have to be used to it yeah, yeah it just wasn't you know after a hard day of traveling and just enjoying our salad and having a okay we're done. bird's eye view we're okay we're all right We're on the arena floor right now, and I was just reading, uh, in this arena, not only did they have the gladiator fights, but uh, they had public executions, and uh, uh, they burned Christians uh, alive. Uh, there's a, a noted story of a couple of, a bishop and a couple of deacons that they burned alive here in the uh, amphitheater to the probably joy and excitement of the crowds. They, this thing isn't all that big. It would hold about 13,000 people. And it is remarkably uh, well preserved. We've taken a stroll down here by the marina. And here are where these mega yachts oh, are docked. And I don't know who these belong to, I, although I know there's a website where you can identify these and who they belong to and which oligarch or uh, big uh, plutocrat they belong to but anyway uh, there's a small little one right there there's a very small one but i mean these look like straight out of james bond <laughs> somebody's little pleasure craft So one of the things that you might consider when choosing a hotel when you come to a destination in Spain is a place that is not necessarily right in the city center wherever you're going. Usually we stay in hotels that are in the city center so we can walk around and find all the sites that we need to do. This time uh, Jay kind of made a little bit of a mistake and didn't realize that his hotel was about uh, what do you say, about five miles away or so from, uh, from the city center here in uh, Tarragona. But being ingenious as we are, we checked there was a city bus that goes into town uh, about every 10 or 15 minutes. So that makes it very easy. So we got on the bus, we paid our uh, dollar, Euro 60 per person. And I realized if we're going back and forth over a couple of days, that could mount up. So we went to the bus station in Tarragona so keep this in mind especially as you are older travelers and want to take public transportation uh, we got for nine euros 75 I believe it was a uh, a pass which is good for both of us for 10 round trips or 10 trips I think 10 10 round no 10 trips. 10 trips yeah 10 trips so that's fine and that'll take us for the two days we're going to be here at a tremendous saving so look for those little uh, little deals whenever you come to a place we're leaving tarragona now on the beautiful mediterranean and we encourage any of our viewers to uh, go ahead and check out this place that most people don't talk about but it really is pretty on on the sea see you in our next video thanks for watching bye